Um, all right, sorry about the delay. We've got a number of uh, 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 high school recruits here that are just uh, saying hello and goodbye to you. So, uh, you know, uh, pleased with some things tonight, certainly first and foremost with the, uh, the outcome, the win. Uh, I was proud of the preparation this week. It was an interesting week with the weather. Uh, really difficult to, had, had difficult to practice Tuesday, and then we uh, uh, like to publicly uh, thank the Houston Texans for allowing us to come over to their uh, use their indoor facility on uh, Wednesday and Thursday and got good uh, uh, good work done uh, certainly in there. But uh, uh, you know started off uh, slow, uh, really across the board, and uh, uh, were able to overcome that. UNLV came down and their opening drive, put points on the board. Uh, first half, I thought we were uh, we hit some plays offensively. We got we got ahead, 13 to seven, and uh, stalled a little bit. Uh, you know, we hit some plays and and uh, really never got. Uh, you're probably tired of me saying this, but never got in a rhythm. I felt like offensively in the first half, uh, made a few adjustments at halftime. Uh, I would. Characterized as both mentally and schematically, and, and uh, uh, came out in the second half. And I thought, uh, uh, you know, the way we started, the, the long kickoff return, a couple of plays, we go down and get points on the board with a touchdown on offense. We got momentum, and then uh, after having not created a turnover defensively in the first 30 minutes, uh, Eric Allen makes a tremendous, tremendous play on the interception. And we get uh, points off of that as well. And I thought uh, the, moment, the momentum, uh, certainly along with the, uh, the point differential at that point, uh, really I felt like blew the game open. And uh, we were able to keep that momentum, I felt like, through the entire second half. Uh, I thought we uh, did a nice job in a number of areas offensively running the football. I thought our receivers blocked extremely well on the perimeter and downfield. I thought our offensive line uh, did a nice job uh, not only uh, initiating their blocks but finishing them as well. And then I thought our, our running backs, uh, Kenneth Farrell, Ryan Jackson, I'm going to add even Jed and Webb into that in the fourth quarter. I thought they ran the ball very, very hard and uh, maybe rushed for uh, just under uh, 400 yards and 399 yards is what I was told, uh, which really, if you study the game closely, it's uh, the knee we took right before half, I think John McCorn might have taken a, a, a two-yard loss on the, on the knee. So uh, we've got some disappointed uh, offensive linemen in our locker right now, having only rushed for uh, 399, and really uh, place the blame again on John. So, uh, <laughs> but again, I mean, I thought his second half very accurate, made great decisions. Uh, after throwing the two uh, interceptions in the first half, I thought he responded uh, very, very well. Didn't get uh, rattled and. and uh, kept his composure and, and uh, uh, made some great throws, and I thought he extended some plays with his with his feet as well. So, uh, and again, defensively, three turnovers created all in the uh, second half. Uh, again, with, I think we were plus one uh, as a team, and when you, when you do that and uh, put a couple of those other things together, you got a chance to be successful. The other thing we talked about this week was eliminating uh, some foolish mistakes. Uh, some of that, that can be categorized as, as penalties. I thought we had one early with a late hit uh, uh, on a receiver after an incomplete pass. But uh, for the most part, I thought uh, our guys uh, in the penalty uh, category, at least in terms of foolish penalties, we had a couple of pass interferences. Those are technique things we can certainly clean up and guys get a great effort. But uh, in terms of some foolish penalties, I thought besides the, uh, the late hit there, we at least had some uh, some things corrected from from the, the game uh, prior. So, uh, and then special teams. You know, I thought our guys uh, responded uh, coming off of the disappointing performance in the kicking game against BYU. I thought uh, uh, you know the, the glaring things certainly in that game were the were the missed field goal and, and two extra points. Uh, but I thought as a whole, I thought our coverage units were outstanding, both in punt and kickoff. Uh, I thought we got great pressure on our field goal block. Uh, whether we caused a miss or not uh, is debatable, but, but uh, we did force a miss and had great pressure. Um, I thought our kickoff return had some uh, some bright spots. We did have a, a penalty or two in the return game that, that cost us there. And I thought our, uh, our, uh, Logan Piper did a really nice job 
uh, putting the football as well. So I thought it was improvement, and uh, I think uh, we needed to see that. And I think uh, uh, certainly that helps uh, our, uh, our confidence in those areas moving forward. Coach, was it, you, you, you mentioned about the slow start now quite a bit. Is it more of a, a setting a tempo or setting a pace, you know, trying to get uh, a, a communication deal with, with the guys not being able to, to get a quick start or at least set some some kind of tempo or pace? No, I, get I, I, think, I think it's a number of things when you're talking about a quick start. And, and again, you know, I've said this in the past, certainly we would like to have a quick start. You know, ideally we'd like to have a, a fast start and a fast finish and play a complete game. And I think a number of things. I think uh, sometimes you, you anticipate certain uh, schemes and personnel packages, just just different concepts, if you will, from your opponent. And again, uh, we have coaches, opponents have coaches. And I'm not referencing tonight. I'm just referencing the, yeah. the fast or slow start question. Um, and sometimes, uh, as we throw curveballs at opponents, they throw them at us. So we got to adjust a little bit. And, and uh, you know we try to do this on the sideline. Try not to wait till halftime. We try to get that communicated and, and, and changed with any adjustments on the <coughs> sideline. And I think at times also, uh, I think uh, as much as anything tonight, I think we just needed to settle down. You know, I thought in the first quarter, I thought UNLV really had an advantage in field position. Um, and I thought that changed a little bit in the second quarter. But I thought in the first quarter they had the advantage in field position. And then I, and then I thought. Uh, you know, just to, just individually, we needed to settle down a little bit, and relax, and just and just play and execute. And uh, you know, again, I go back to, to what I uh, referenced nine minutes ago. At halftime, you know, we had some uh, personnel discussions in terms of uh, some young men we just we talked to very candidly, and then we, we certainly changed things up schematically. And I felt like uh, uh, the young men that maybe uh, needed to just relax and just play. In the first half, I, I felt like they did that in the second half. What was it about the running game that was better tonight that you guys had not been doing? Um, well, I think it was, uh, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm, I think it's a combination of a number of things. Uh, I, I've never gone, uh, uh, never is a long time, I shouldn't say. I'm not going <laughs> to try to put it directly on, on one thing, but uh, I'm going to go back and, and reference, uh, again, what I said a few minutes ago. I thought, uh, I said this first. I thought our receivers really blocked well downfield. You know, uh, we had some runs where our backs broke tackles tonight, and uh, it looked a little bit like deja vu from previous games where they broke tackles, but it would be a 12-yard gain or a 15-yard gain in previous games. And tonight, uh, I thought the blocking downfield was excellent, and they turned into 50-yard runs and touchdowns. And then uh, certainly, I thought our offensive line uh, did a nice job. You know, we had a, uh, we tweaked some things schematically this week. Um, some of it we should say was for us, and some of it was for specifically for UNLV and what they did defensively. And uh, you know, we played. It's interesting. We played four games. We've really seen four different defenses, both uh, schematically and philosophically, in terms of what they want to do. So uh, you know, we game plan uh, certainly, obviously for. For what UNLV did, and I thought uh, I thought our offensive line really executed it well. Joe Hill, we seemed like uh, late in the third. I think he kind of went down on the you know the extent of his injury. Or yeah, he's he's fine. Okay. Goes to defense they played. Other than that first drive for you, and he scored. Other than that, y'all pretty much shut him down for the rest the rest of the game. Y'all defensive line, I, I saw they played pretty well too. So well. how would you assess your defense? I thought our defense played well. You know, I think uh, we gave up seven points in the first half. Maybe again, as we referenced the opening drive, uh, and then I think we settled down defensively, and, uh, made made plays. And I think in the second half we gave up seven points. Uh, the difference being the, the three turnovers in the second half. You know, I think uh, uh, our defensive line made some plays. You know, you know, Eric Island is a defensive lineman, and uh, again had that, that huge interception, which was uh, as big a play in this game as. Is any, in my opinion, and, uh, you know, one one young man I'm going to uh, point out, and, and this was brought up a bunch this week. I'm going to point out two young men. One is Devonte Davis, who I think is one of the <coughs> premier premier elite receivers in the United States. And again, I uh, just had a chance to visit with him after the game, and just a tremendous young man. 
uh, Derek Matthews and, and Devontae are, are lifelong best friends. And uh, uh, I think the world of him, you know, I told him I'm going to enjoy watching him uh, play on Sundays for a long time. And uh, he's the first I'm going to mention. And the second is going to be William Jackson. I thought our defense as a whole uh, did a nice job. Uh, but uh, we challenged William this week and, and really matched him up on Devontae. And uh, he limited Devontae to one catch for zero yards. I think it's the first time since uh, someone told me December of 2011 that he's been held to, to zero yards receiving the game. So uh, really proud of William Jackson. You can't do that alone. It's, again, it's, I think it's the ultimate team sport. We got, I thought we had great pressure on their, their quarterback. And, and uh, I thought uh, we were flying around in the back end, not only our DBs, but our linebackers. And, uh, but again, I do want to uh, mention William Jackson. I thought he had a, a great performance. Can you talk about another member of the secondary, uh, Adrian McDonald, who obviously has seven turnovers in consecutive games? Right. Absolutely. And, and again, uh, you know, when you talk about Adrian McDonald, and, and we refer to him as AMAC, and, um, you know, high school quarterback came in here, ended up uh, initially thinking we were going to redshirt him, and then ended up uh, pulling the redshirt as a freshman three seasons ago. and Started the last couple of games, and he's uh, you know, between him and Trayvon Stewart and, and the rest of the young men back, men back there. They're, they're uh, I mean, I, they think about taking the football away uh, day and night. And uh, we talked about it this week, and we felt like uh, you know UNLV did throw the ball down the field. We, we knew that going into the game. We felt like we were going to have some opportunities to make plays on balls down the field. Um, you know, Island Eric made the one over the middle, which was going you know, to be a an in-cut route and more of an intermediate throw, but Howard Wilson's interception was brought on the field, so that this was Amax, and um, you know, he is always around the ball. If, uh, it's fun, uh, certainly I hope it's fun for the people in the stands like it is for our staff and his teammates. It's fun to watch uh, uh, Adrian a Amac play because he just loves to play. He's energetic. He's on special teams. Uh, when his teammates make great, great plays, he's fired up. And, and that's offensive, defense, and special teams. And he's just, uh, uh, when I say he's come a long way, yeah, I'm referencing football. Just that uh, I remember watching his high school video with Coach Spav, and he was an option quarterback that ran all over the place and, and uh, liked to break tackles and could change direction. And he said, you know, we feel like we could project him as a, as a defensive back. And uh, that's what we did, whether it was a corner of safety, and he, he found his home pretty early in our program. And, and it's just, really, really become one of our most consistent student-athletes, regardless of position, offense or defense, uh, that, we, that we have out on the field. Tony, from the BYU game and having some time in between, a little extra time, and then now you've got some more time after this one. How big was it to get a good game under your old belt uh, you know, to take it into that, that break here before you play the conference? I, I do think it was important. And, and I think, uh, you know, I think for, for a couple of reasons, and the one I think first and foremost is I've, I've sat up here at this uh, on the stage here a couple of times after uh, uh, outcomes that we uh, that didn't enjoy, and I've said publicly and certainly privately to our uh, to our staff, to our coaches, and to our student athletes. Uh, I think we can be a good football team, and, and I think we're going to be a good football team this season. Um, However, going into tonight, we had a losing record. So, uh, you know, you look back and uh, you know, if, can you look at the last three games, like the Grambling game, uh, executing uh, really well and, 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 you know, having a dominant performance and, and a good victory, going on the road to a top 25 uh, BYU team and, and a tough place to play and, and uh, you know, having a chance to tie at the end with, with the ball back and then coming out here tonight and, Facing an opponent that played in a bowl game last year, and, and uh, you know, again, I, I, I'm not as excited about the first half, but uh, certainly the outcome and it gives you gives you confidence moving forward, and, and it's there's things to build on. It's like I just told our guys in the locker room, we're going to come in tomorrow, we're going to watch the film, and we're going to uh, correct some mistakes that we made, and we're going to uh, emphasize and, and uh, point out the things we did correctly, and there were a lot of things we did correctly, so we can build off of that and. Uh, but again, ultimately, you know, answering your question, I think um, uh, the way we uh, performed in all three phases on offense, defense, and special teams is, uh, I think, is a, a, certainly a positive 
uh, with us starting conference conference in, uh, in 12 days. Anything else? Thank you.